guys and ladies welcome back to another exciting episode my name is December Matieti this is episode number 23 of the being an analyst podcast and like I promised in episode 22 we're going to be talking about COVID COVID is a nice uh, uh, IT governance uh, uh, IT governance tool that will help us as analysts to know what should be done especially with our databases that we've spoken about in episode 21 and how should the rest of the world actually look at what we have done in terms of governance and COVID is one of those tools that they can use to evaluate us and we can use it to our advantage to show that we have made our organization worth something because we actually followed the guidelines. Uh, That's what we're discussing just after our theme songs. So stay tuned. So our conversation today is going to start with just a high level overview of what actually enterprise governance is, especially for information and technology and how does COVID come in. We're going to chat about a little bit about COVID, what, what is it looking at in terms of internal stakeholders and outside stakeholders. And at the end of this video, we're going to be showing how do we plug into the COVID multi-layered COVID framework uh, and, and, and how uh, are we quite vital in it? And lastly, we're going to be talking about what COVID is and what COVID is not, so that we can have a clear understanding just before we say, okay, we're going to be using COVID for this reason or for that reason. With that, further ado, let's start with the first uh, uh, segment of our podcast. What is enterprise governance of information and technology? We can call this EGIT, enterprise governance, EG. IT of information and technology. And, you know, it's quite important for us to have governance, especially given the centricity of information and technology for enterprise risk management and value generation, especially focusing on enterprise uh, governance of information and technology. And we have known how uh, information and technology have grown within the last two decades. And it is quite important for us to have a look at that. So EGIT and enterprise governance of information and technology is an integral part of corporate governance. Remember, we've spoken about the board and the board is done with King 4. That's corporate governance uh, right here in South Africa. And actually King 4 is internationally recognized. So when we're looking at that side, we say the board is responsible for, for, uh, for information and technology. So we're coming down to say, oh, hang on a second. Actually, uh, EGIT is exercised by the board that oversees the definition and interpretation of processes, structures, and relational mechanism. And it en- enables both the business and IT people, including us, to execute their responsibilities in support of business and IT alignment. And it enables uh, creation of business value and I- information and technology, IT enabled business investment. That's just looking at the enterprise governance of information and technology. Just while we there, we remember the triangle that we've spoken about. So in this triangle, I just want us to look at just the first top uh, portion of the triangle. Remember the first one was the strategic level. That's where the board sits. And then la- the second one, which was the middle, was the uh, uh, tactical level, which is where the management or executive level sits. Just looking at that tip uh, of the of the ice board, of the, of the iceberg, if I might say, just that small portion of the triangle. That's where governance and management is looking at the definition. So the first part of governance, which is where the board level is, um, COVID will ensure stakeholder needs, um, conditions, and options that evaluated uh, to determine enterprise objectivity. And also on that level, 
is there to ensure the direction is set through the prioritization and decision making and also to ensure uh, performance and compliance are monitored against objective that's just on the board level to say hang on a second we have some objective are you compliant with it we have some direction can you actually um we've set the direction can you prioritize uh, uh, the direction that we have set and you know uh, help us with help you with decision making just below that on the, on the uh, tactical level which is on the management or executive level of the uh, pyramid um, we're looking at plans builds runs um, monitors uh, of activities in alignment with the direction that is set by the governing governance body to uh, achieve the enterprise objective so the first board sets the the governance and objective and the management level just you know looks at how do we plan how do we build how do we run and how do we monitor activities that aligns with whatever we have been given for governance so when we're looking at that that's where we're looking at what COVID is going to be helping with and without so while we're there let's just look at before we start with COVID, and i tell you the framework let's just go to another segment that says what is COVID and what is not COVID. so there's four things that we're going to be talking about on both sides the first four that says what COVID is number one is COVID is a framework for governance and management of it of enterprise int which is information and technology so anything else that has to do with information and everything else that has to do with technology COVID could be applied. Number two, COVID defines their components uh, to build and sustain a governance system. So remember, it, when we are implementing governance, we can use COVID to define those components so that we can build our, our governance system. Number three is COVID defines the design factors that should be considered by enterprises to build a best fit governance systems best fit governance system which means uh, it could be internationally recognized governance system um the last one is that COVID is flexible yes it is flexible you don't have to adhere to everything so it is flexible and it allows guidance to new topics to be added so in case you have something that COVID did not cater for you are welcome to extend onto that especially as as analysts you would see when we get to that portion that you have some frame with some freedom to actually add or remove but as long as you adhere to the framework you can say we are COVID. okay let's look at what COVID is not COVID is not uh any of this four number one it is not a full description of the whole it environment of the enterprise so you cannot come and say oh COVID shows our dna or our framework of of the whole entire um, enterprise IT environment. No, you cannot do that. COVID is just there for governance so that we know that what you are doing is quite correct. Not It's not a blueprint. So I would still say first start with standard operating procedures or a map of the whole entire IT system. Then after that, then you extract, you complete the COVID framework. It's, a, it's not a framework to organize business processes. So your business processes, you still have to sit with your business analyst and your process engineer, and you discuss your business processes. You cannot rely and say, no, COVID is going to show us how the process are going to go. Um, it, it's, it, it is not an IT or technical framework to manage all technology. You cannot. And the last thing is COVID does not make or prescribe any IT related decisions. So COVID, you cannot say, hang on a second, we are deciding whether we're going to uh, buy or build or we're going to enhance a model or going to update something and we're going to be using COVID for that. No, COVID is not that. COVID is there for uh, IT governance. Why do we need an enterprise information and technology governance? Is that the triangle? Remember we spoke about it, that the directive starts from the board of directors. It goes all the way down. That, you can say, can you show us that thing? Can we adhere to COVID so that we can know that what we have implemented within our IT infrastructure. So when we're looking at that, if that is on your scorecard, then I think you are in good stead to be using COVID for that. So I think we are, we are, we are, uh, we are together in this case. We're not saying COVID is going to help us with documentation. With, no, COVID is just a framework for governance so that the board of directors, as they sit there and they're like, how is information um, uh, access and authorization managed we would know okay this is how it's managed 
according to the COBOT framework. Let's look at our internal stakeholders. Let's look at, um, you know, who can benefit from this. And then later on, we're going to look at the external stakeholders that can actually benefit from COVID. So we have about six internal stakeholders that can actually benefit quite nicely with, with COVID, starting with the, the bot itself. So it will provide insight on how to get value from the use of information and technology and explain the relevant bot responsibilities. So when you are COVID compliant, can you see you're already helping your bot sit there and make decisions? Because already, irrespective of the technology that you pick, the, bo the bot looking at COVID will say, I think we know uh, where we are going. Executive management, which is the second uh, portion of the triangle, pro it provides guidance on how to organize, monitor, uh, performance, and of, I of information and technology across the enterprise. So remember, the management level has to go back to the board and say, this is how much, or this is what the landscape look like of our IT infrastructure or IT environment. So COVID will help with that. The last one is the business managers, which is now a level lower. Uh, we're looking at middle managers here. Those business managers, it helps to understand how to obtain the information and technology solutions enterprise require and how best to exploit their technology for strategic responsibilities. Because remember, when we say enterprise governance, COVID is not just looking at the IT department, it's looking at enterprise wide. So when we're looking at business managers, whether they sit within the IT department or they are sitting in HR or they're sitting in finance or they are sitting in operations, COVID framework of COVID way of uh, um, governance will help them understand how to obtain uh, IT solutions uh, within that enterprise. IT managers, these are the ones that sit within the IT uh, environment. It provides guidance on how best to build and structure the IT department manage performance of IT, run an efficient and effective IT operation, control IT costs, align IT strategy to business priorities, and et cetera. So all of that to say, how do you, what does the software development life cycle look like? Um, and then how you split it out to say, okay, we're gonna do this. We have built, you know, a site, we have maybe we are procuring, all of that uh, IT managers could could be you know helped accordingly assurance providers which are the people that you know uh, probably sitting on the site uh, probably uh, internal auditors just is looking for uh, assurance it helps manage dependencies on external service providers uh, provides assurance over it and enables the existence of an effective and efficient system of internal controls so it's just to give them assurance to say listen we have this framework that's put in place, and we know that this is how um, it all works out. It looks quite nice. And for risk management, it helps to ensure that the identification of management of all IT-related risk is done correctly. So remember, any other technology that we, de we deploy or we employ, all of that has got risk attached to it, and that risk management with COVID, you can be able to identify the risks properly. Now, now that we know the internal stakeholders, let us spend you know a few t uh, minutes here just discussing the external stakeholders because we need the external stakeholders. And the first one is the regulators. I mean, if you are a bank, you, could, you have regulators in your place. If you are in, in government, you have regulators in place because no government entity ex uh, exists on its own. There might be an act, there might be whatever in place. So it determines whether the enterprise is compliant with applicable rules and regulation and advises what the enterprise has the right governance systems in place to manage and sustain, um, sustain compliance. So compliance to whatever the regulation is. If you're in the banking, the banking association would say, hang on a second, let us see. We told we told you what you must do, and we come back with COVID to say this is what the controls look like, this is what governance system looks like. And then they say, oh, hang on a second. Are we sure that you're going to be able to comply with what we just gave you as a directive, as the regulators? So all of that is what the board of directors is responsible for. Besides that, we have business partners. Um, if you are, in, well, as SMME or a large organization, this, you know, um, going with COVID, will confirm that the business part will confirm that business partners operations are secure, reliable and compliant with applicable rules and regulation, especially nowadays that we are using APIs, you, you clicking into my system, 
so that you can attract or you're selling on one uh, e-commerce so, um, solution all of that with COVID compliance we're here to show that oh hang on a second we are just not going to bring down your system can you see how important this is just for us analysts in setting up the system it vendors um yes even it vendors also it vendors operations must establish that they are secure reliable and compliant with applicable rules and regulations so you just there on that side just going with COVID and talking to them to say guys we want you guys to have a look at COVID, and we want you guys to also know what how we're operating can actually help quite a lot just looking at that so we have governance system when we have governance framework and all of those things are part of COVID. um if you're looking at it if you're looking at the the governance framework you're looking at uh, you know you have some conceptual model you have some open and flexible um, uh, framework because COVID, you can do it whichever way that you want to do it and you you would know that you align with major standards uh, if you follow COVID. on the governance side it provides stakeholder value uh, it, the governance is distinct from management because you know that the board of directors will have this governance and management will look at this we'll have a look at it now you will have a holistic approach of the enterprise for, um, architecture is tailored for each enterprise's needs so you don't say COVID is you know it's strict for me if stuff are not applicable to you you just say accordingly not applicable not applicable dynamic governance system and you have an end-to-end -end governance system so you know adhering with COVID, you know that you are in the right place because it's an end-to-end -end system what does it look like so COVID is split into i would say two things first one is the governance of objective uh, objectives and the last one is the management of objectives so on the government of objectives, which is the first portion, you're looking at evaluate, you're looking at direct and monitor. So first thing that the board of directors would do, we want to evaluate, we want to give you a directive, and we want to monitor. Okay. What the rest of the management is supposed to do is the first thing, other sections of management of, of objective could be aligning, planning, and organization. Other ones could be build, acquire, or implement. Other ones could be deliver, service and support. Other ones could be uh, monitor, evaluate, and assess. So you'll see that different portions of the, the, the IT environment is responsible for different things. Let's start with the, the framework of, of COVID. So you'll find out COVID is the multi-layered framework. So it has four layers one two three four the first layer on the top it's about governance so that's where board of directors is the other uh um well it actually it has five layers that was COVID uh, five that i'm talking about but COVID 2019 has got five layers uh beg your pardon the first layer is the uh, governance where the board is responsible for that's where the evaluate direct and monitor is sitting on so that's where you're making sure that you are short governance framework setting, uh, you are short benefit for delivery, you are short risk optimization, you are short uh, resource optimization, and you are short stakeholder engagement. That's on, on governance. And then after that, then you have four layers. You have the first layer, which is about align, plan, and organize. You have the second layer, which is about build, uh, acquire, and implement. And just after that one, you have the third layer, which is about deliver, service, and support. The last layer is actually sitting on the side because it's applicable both on the uh, aligned plan and organized layer. It's applicable on the build, acquire, and implement layer. It is also applicable on the deliver, service, and support layer. And this layer that sits on the side, it is the monitor, evaluate, and assess layer. This is the layer where most of us as analysts you would find our, our job being there so let, let me just go high level on the uh, three layers before we spend some time on our layer the other layer i mean the one that's about align plan and organize you find stuff like manage it management frameworks uh, manage uh, uh, it strategy manage evolution innovation manage risk manage quality you, you realize that that's the uh, how do you manage data how do you manage security? How do you manage vendors uh, layer? That's the 
uh, first layer. Second layer of the three managed layer, it's about uh, build, acquire, and implement. That's where we're looking at you know, programs, we're looking at projects, we're looking at configuration, we're looking at managing of assets, we're looking at managing of, inform of knowledge, we're looking at managing of IT changes, we're looking at managing of uh, organizational change, managing and availability of capacity, looking at people, are they gonna be there when we're doing that? That's on the second layer of the, of the management of objectives. The last layer, of the management of objectives, it's about deliver service and support. And under deliver service and support, that's where you have your operations, that's where you have your uh, managing your problems, and that's where you have your managing your continuity, your BCP and stuff. And that's where you're looking at your security services also, as well as you're looking at business process controls. That's just at the bottom layer. So as analysts, where I'm thinking most of us will be under monitor, evaluate, and assess is when we are sitting on the side and we are vertically towards these three layers of, of management of, of objectives, under the first layer of uh, aligning planning and organization, we have managing performance and confirmance, confirming monitoring. That's where we can come back and say, hang on a second, out of all this strategy, risk, quality, managing of, how are we doing? So we are managing the performance and the confirmance of uh, confirmance monitoring. We're looking at how are we doing on that level. Under the, le the second layer of build, acquire, and implement, we are looking at two things. We are looking at managed systems of internal controls. This is where now you can feel IT audit because we're talking internal controls and compliance is coming in. Uh, and if you are an analyst that sits in there, you would know very well uh, how important it is to have internal controls and you are managed compliance with external requirements. So that on that layer of build, acquire and implement, we're looking at internal controls and um, we're looking at compliance. On the last one, which is much more at the bottom layer where we're looking at deliver service and support, we are looking at managed assurance as, as analysts. So we can say, hang on a second, we had uh, this target and this is how we're tracking towards it. We had this objectives and that's why we're tracking towards it. We have this controls that we're supposed to put in and this is how we're tracking towards it. Does it mean that analysts can only be under monitoring side? No, it doesn't mean. You could be an analyst uh, in operations. So you could be an analyst that sits with managing of problems. You could be an analyst in managed uh, projects. You could be an analyst that sits anywhere in any field of, co of COVID. But when it comes to the implementation of COVID, meaning that pushing it upward to, to the board of directors, the best way to do that, IT auditing is the one that actually helps to tell the board what we have done. And what does IT, IT auditing does? It comes through, it looks at our internal controls and it looks at our compliance in our databases. So you created your database and you say, hang on a second, they're gonna be asking you, how is people accessing the database? They'll say, okay, we ex access it by user, or by roles. All of those is what is needed to be taken upstairs. How often do people run? Can they have access to run the query or they don't run the query they that you access? All of those, that feedback that you give out will be used to actually feedback to the board of directors on your day-to-day -day operations. And when they are getting asked by regulators, they say, no way, no way ever in the organization where somebody accesses the database using their own user um, password and user id we are all going there based on our roles if you are in finance you'll have a finance role you'll be able to access finance if you're in hr you have a hr role you'll be able to access it using hr and so forth so that's how you feedback everything else back to the board of directors and i hope this made it clear because now we looked at COVID, and you can see oh hang on a second you can't just run your own database the way that you want it Sometimes you might be told by management what they want to see. They might say, we want to see vendor information on a separate server. We want to see um, customer information on a separate server. And then you're thinking to yourself, who would do that? Now, instead of running a simple query, we have to run an SSIS that aggregates here and it aggregates to another server. And then we bring it to the third server or we pulling it using a cube or we pulling it, well, a cube will only work on one server. Or we can pull it using uh, what you call Power Query, uh, where we've spoken about the online um, 
the OLAP, uh, Online Analytical Processing uh, Database, that might be the only way that you can analyze your data. But before you get there, you must understand what are the controls that are put in place and what are the, um, you know, how much room do you have before you can play around and do your own thing. So that's COVID. 